have done the DSM criteria, did the two prospective scale monitoring, and you have diagnosed your patient with PMDD. Let's begin the most important section of this podcast, which is treatment. Before I go into the medication options, let's briefly discuss what studies have shown us in terms of effect of lifestyle modification with these symptoms management. First is aerobic exercise. Well, there are studies which shows that um, in late luteal phase, there is a decline in endorphin levels, which can contribute to these symptoms especially the premenstrual symptoms in some women. And this study shows that a regular aerobic exercise can increase the release of endorphins. And uh, they recommended that if a woman perform at least 20 to 30 minutes of aerobic exercise each day for at least three days a week, beneficial effects will be seen in premenstrual symptoms. That's number one, no side effects. Number two is reducing caffeine and alcohol intake. And um, a few studies have shown how premenstrual symptoms get worse with caffeine, with alcohol, and even with salt intake. That's number two. If possible, reducing caffeine intake, avoiding alcohol, more benefits of that. Now, number three, other than exercise and avoiding food, calcium supplementation. Now, this is very interesting. So, studies have shown effectiveness of calcium in moderate to severe premenstrual symptoms. And there was this study where they randomized people to 1,200 milligram per day of calcium carbonate and placebo for three cycles. And what did they found? They found that premenstrual symptoms were significantly reduced in the calcium treated group, especially on second and third treatment cycle. So this is worth an option. Um, for management of premenstrual symptoms. That's number three. Number four is supplementation of magnesium. Um, magnesium, there was one study that I found. It was a double-blind placebo control crossover study. Here, uh, women were randomized to 200 milligram per day of magnesium or placebo. What did they found? Well, they found that um, women who received daily magnesium supplementation had a significantly lower symptoms of fluid retention, which is, you remember that uh, table that I showed you? Physical symptoms, weight gain, breast tenderness, swelling of extremities, abdominal bloating, and this was actually noticed in this by the second cycle of treatment. So worth an option, 200 milligram per day of magnesium. Fifth one is vitamin B6. And uh, there was one study that showed this 50 to 100 milligram per day range can be beneficial in reducing these symptoms. But be mindful here. If you increase the dose beyond 100 milligram per day, it can be harmful. So staying below 100 is an option if you decide to use vitamin B6. Now, these are the non-pharmacologic option. Aerobic exercise, reducing alcohol, caffeine, considering supplementation with either calcium, magnesium, or vitamin B6.